This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, and this is your film and music show and your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. Python. And I have a great guest on the phone with me today. Um, I know her best as Kate Rambo in Rock and Roll High School, and (laughs) (laughs) I want to introduce... Day Young. Hello, Day. Hi there, Greg. How are you? I'm doing fine. I got your name right. It's Day, right? Yes, it is. Okay. D E Y. It's my father's initials. It's not D A Y. So I get that. People oftentimes don't know how to uh, pronounce it because of the E, but it is. It's Day. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering, what because uh, you're the only person I know of that has a name like that. Yeah, first name. Yeah, my father's um, name is Donald Earl Young, which was spelled D-E-Y. And during the war, he was um, uh, called Day in the war. So when he had a child, that's what they named me. So I like the name. I mean, a lot of people think it's a stage name, but it's not. Well, you're not the first name I've had uh, wrong on here. I had um, like Lisa Lang was on here uh, last year, for, and um, I was calling her Lisa Langles, but she never corrected me. And it wasn't until last week when I had Leslie Donaldson on here, with, who was one of her friends, who who corrected me on it. And uh, she said, "Oh, she probably gets she probably gets that a lot, you know." <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> you know. But, uh, well, you got it right. Well, what can you say? You're a Canadian way up there. It's cold, right? <laughs> well, we're getting into that spring of the year. It's raining outside. The snow's starting to disappear. I'm in a little province called New Brunswick, and I'm, I live in a city called Fredericton. There's Fredericton, St. John, and Moncton, three cities in, in New Brunswick. Have you been up My this week? My goodness. Week? I haven't. I've worked um, a lot in Vancouver. Um, as an actor, and um, a couple of times in Toronto. Um, and then Montreal. My, I actually, um, my daughter was um, filming a movie up there. The Smurf was uh, filming up in, in, uh, in Montreal, and my daughter worked in the art department up there. So that's about uh, my extent. And then I, um, I went to, the, uh, to Quebec also. She and I went to Quebec, which is beautiful. So, but I ha- I haven't. I'm a big skier though, and I I know there's some great snow up there and great places to ski. Yeah, well, we're just alongside uh, Nova Scotia and Halifax, and that that's uh, where we're located. Wow, unbelievable. Yeah, that's, it's yeah. It's, well, I'll come it, visit someday. It's three o'clock where you are. You know how what time it is where I am? No, what time? Seven o'clock. Oh, seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's not that bad. Okay. Oh, That's it works. Good. Works perfect for me because I, I was able to do my day job and then come in here and do this. This is perfect. Oh, fantastic! Well, that's great. Yes. Well. So you are you so you're on New York time with what, plus one hour even or uh, even later. Uh, we're one hour ahead of New York. Okay, got it. All right, got it. Yeah. Very good. But uh, I'm a big, big, big fan of Rock and Roll High School. I love this movie. Thought I'd get you on here to talk about your scientific American. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that movie, too. It's one of those movies that just, uh, just every, of every generation, it just kind of, people love it. You smile and... Um, it, it's just such a, a happy movie, even though we're we're blowing up our high school. It's still a fun movie. It's all very tongue in cheek. Yeah, it's, I I discovered it. I'd say a good fifteen years ago, and uh, I never forgot it. I got it on Blu-ray home. Um, it's just a really fun movie, and um, really. Um, I don't know how well it did at the theaters when it originally came out. I would have been seven years old when that originally was released in 1979. But I know the Midnight Circuit picked it up, and that was where it really became a hit. Right. When it first came out, I remember the, <clears throat> the premiere. There wasn't, uh, it wasn't a very big deal, and it didn't, 
um, it didn't do quite, it didn't do very well at all. Um, but yes, it then became, it, it, it got a cult following because of the Ramones. And um, I think, um, you know, with time, it's even got more, it, you know, it's even gotten more fans and um, more a different ages and generations seem to really love it. And they've tried to do a few remakes and I don't think they're quite as good. No, um, no, I, I, even even the sequel to it, I wasn't a big fan of the one that uh, Rock and Roll High School Forever. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it quite panned out quite as well. Right, I, I you know, I don't, I, I don't think so either. I, I just think that, um, you know, it, it just was magic, and we oh, that was the very first movie I ever did. And I had just returned from uh, London, from um, studying in London for a couple of years. And I um, didn't even have an agent. And um, I w happened to be at this party with a casting director who came up to me and said that they are desperately trying to find this role of Kate Rambeau. It's the last part. It hasn't been cast would I be available to go in and meet with the director? And I said, sure. And um, I went in and, and met with um, Alan Arkish. And um, I was then on this, uh, that was a Friday afternoon, and I was on the set on Monday morning shooting and filming my very first movie. It was, a, it was an amazing experience. Yeah, and... Uh... Yeah, they did you up. You're supposed to be the nerdy girl. <laughs> yes, they put on some big glasses and 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 everything. And I just, um, but it was she was a sweet girl. She was the nerdy girl, but she was <laughs> she was very sweet and and best friends with PJ, you know, with uh, Rip Randall. So uh, the cool girl and the uh, or the hip girl and the nerdy girl kind of helped each other survive out there. And um, it was really an amazing experience to um, meet the Ramones. I I was very happy I was playing Kate Rambeau because it was exactly what I was feeling as Jay Young. I mean, they were the oddest creatures in the world. I was not familiar with punk rock. And when we had to go and actually... Um, film the scene at the Roxy, they brought in, they did not, you know, it wasn't, um, they brought in, con they did one of those things where they advertised it as a concert. So you had real punk rockers coming and it, it got a little out of hand, a little dangerous, but um, it, it, was a, it was a real eye-opening experience. And I remember when PJ and I, at one point, they had to, the audience was going so wild that at one point they had to stop the, the concert and, and say, you've got to allow these two actors to be able to make their way in without harming them, you know. And so it was PJ and myself having to, to make our way through this crowd to come to the very uh, front of the audience and, you know, right under the Ramones. Um, and, uh, uh, but it was, it was scary going in and out of that crowd. It was a wild, wild crowd. I could just imagine. What, what was the, uh, Ramones like? Unfortunately, n none of them are with us anymore. I know. Um, well, my experience was that they didn't talk a lot, you know, they, <laughs> I, except for Johnny. Johnny kind of at that time was the the one that was the um, voice piece for them. And uh, it seemed like the, the only thing that Joey really cared about besides his music was um, eat, having pizza. And <laughs> so we Which just, he didn't uh, get to have in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we kept being taken away from him, I think, or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, but it was um, they were they well they were very nice, but they were just very quiet and very to themselves, and and except for Johnny was the one who was the spokesperson for them, and very very affable and 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 a an, uh, really nice, very smart guy, and I ended up going um, and 
and uh, I think I went to a couple of events um, in more recent years um, because he died of prostate cancer. And so there have been events um, in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery here where he's buried um, for the for, uh, for Rock and Roll High School. And so he and his wife were very, um, I don't know, they seemed very active and very conscientious and, and um, uh, just a lot more out there and sociable, social, a lot more social than any of the others from what I could sense. Yeah, here on my show, um, when I do live shows, I have I keep track of the music I play. I've played the Ramones more than any other artist on my show since uh, I started film criticism in 1996, but I started here at the station in 2005. And since 2005, I've played the Ramones more than anything. Really? Yes. So are you a big punker? Well, I don't know whether I'm a big punker. I like the Ramones, and there's a Canadian band uh, that here that I like. Uh, unfortunately, no longer uh, lead singer, um, Teenage Head. And uh, I play Teenage Head a lot in conjunction with a movie called Class of 1984 because that was filmed here, and I've interviewed some of the actors from that. Um, mm. Yeah, so um, my um, level of knowledge on punk rock would be like, uh, the Sex Pistols, which I'm, I haven't listened to as much, but I love the Ramones. They're very playful, very funny, and I like uh, Teenage Head. Wow. Well, I've never heard Teenage Head, I'm afraid. But, um, yeah, I agree with you. I think the, the Ramones are playful. And, um, uh, I mean, it, it's not brain science to listen to the lyrics of it. No. <laughs> you know, uh, but um, yeah, they, they are a lot of fun, and boy, they they certainly created quite a um, an audience for Rock and Roll High School, and and quite a following. You know, I I occasionally go and do we'll do these conventions, and uh, with PJ and Mary Warnoff, the three of us will go, and um, it's amazing how many people come out of the woodwork because of of that movie and because of uh, the Ramones. Yeah. Speaking of PJ and Mary, you know, those are two people I have tried to reach out to to get on my show here. Mary, there doesn't seem to be any contact information on her uh, web page. Um, yeah, she's very private. She got, you know, I, I mean, she's not easy to to get a hold of PJ, though. If you go, if you approach her via Facebook, she might get back to you that way. Yeah, I know. And, Mary, and what about Mary uh, through Facebook? Did you try that? I don't know if she's got... Does she have a Facebook page? I think so, but I'm not exactly... I'm not exactly sure. I, you know, I don't really... Um, even though they both... Li I mean, I'm a lot closer with PJ. Like, uh, I do a lot of stage, and PJ will come to see it. And um, But PJ does a lot of these conventions, so she's very, very busy. But I... I, I, I I don't know if she'll do a podcast. I really can't speak for her, but it, the best way to reach her is um, is via Facebook and just say you did a a, a podcast, um, you know, with me. And would she be interested in coming on? That's you know, that's what I would. That's the best way I would try to reach out to her. I'm a huge PJ Souls fan. I loved her and I know. Yeah, Carrie, Halloween, Stripes. Um, I got a couple of autograph pictures of her back in the nineties in the mail. I still have them too. Wow. Yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah, she's you know, she she's done, she has done some of those classics and uh uh, so she does quite well at those conventions for the horror movies, um, and uh, and she's just the nicest person in the world, just the nicest. Yeah. So and she has a couple grandkids now that I think she's putting a lot of energy into. So when she's not traveling to these different conventions, I don't think she's working as much as an actress, uh, from what I can tell. Um, uh, just just mainly doing conventions that you'd have to ask her. 
Yeah, I don't. I haven't done. I haven't yeah. done a couple. I haven't done any in a couple of years. They get. They're very exhausting. Yeah. You know, I went and did Chiller, which was in New Jersey, and I did quite well there, and that was a lot of fun. But I, you know, I, I, if I can do them maybe once every couple of years, that's great. And because I did Star Trek, I have a little bit of a, a few. Uh, I have a little following with that as well. Yeah, um, yeah, you did Star Trek on TV. Yes, right. Yeah, um, I don't get to the conventions. In fact, I don't usually get too far uh, out of New Brunswick, but uh, I think they'd be cool to attend. But, yeah, I'm going to reach out to PJ again here in a, a few months, you know, because I, I would love to get her on here. Huge fan. Totally a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> To, well, I'll let I'll let her know if I run into her. It's, I I rarely run into her, so um, if uh, uh, if I if I end up doing one of these conventions, uh, you know, it's so you know a lot of people come and 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 do uh, radio shows from the conventions. Yeah. Yeah, I just go from one person to the next. There are a bunch of people who do that. Well, she looked really cool in those clothes and those pigtails. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, she was great. Yeah. She was. Well, she seemed to, like, like I heard that she even, like, got, uh, got the part because, you know, she, she was able to make her own clothes. Oh, really? I, well, I didn't know or anything about that. Either, I mean, I know they... Either make they them a, or that she bought them, one or the other. I, well, I, 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 I actually don't know about that, but... Um, they, you know, her clothes were very, I wore a, a bunch of my own clothes and then they had, you know, they would fill in because doing a Roger Corman movie, which is, is just probably the lowest budget movie you'll ever, well, that's not true. Now today they are making so many low budget movies. Yeah, just look at actors, the room. Right. Just look at the room. <laughs> that was made for $6 million, but I don't know where the money went. <laughs> Yeah, I don't either. I mean, to tell you the truth, uh, probably on the actors, but I, but you know, um, on uh, there's so many movies. This a movie I just finished that I was working on in North Carolina is the budget's like three hundred thousand. So it's so many ultra low budget movies are being made, and so many are being they're tr they're going out and trying to raise money on kick um, Kickstarter and all. I mean, the business has changed so much in that way. Yeah. What what was uh, Mary Warnov like to work with? Should she give you a big black mark that will follow you around for the rest of your life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, she was scary at first, but then she's, she's got such a great sense of humor. And and actually, she's a wonderful artist, so I really respect her as an artist um, and um, as a painter. But she was just a, a lot of fun, and, and she and Paul Bartel, who were very close, um, they, um, they just, they, they were just wonderful, both of them to work with. And, 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 and she just had a great sense of humor and very serious and, 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 you know, and got very much into her role. So I, I just think that the casting of that was absolutely perfect. The interesting thing about Mary is that She's the antagonist, but you kind of like her. And it's a thing, everything because Mary is so likable. Right. Well, she's funny. Yeah. And of course. You know, and she, she makes you laugh, and you can, you can, I mean, there's every, she's very tongue in cheek, you know. She's very, um, um, you know, she's a, she's a bit spooky. So you're able to, you know, laugh with her, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And unfortunately, Paul Bartel no longer with us, but he was, of course, the, the cool uh, teacher that got eater mail. <laughs> a little pre. <laughs> <laughs> you almost could say email, you know? Right, right, exactly. Yeah, he was, uh, yeah, that was so cute. It was just such a uh, cute, a cute premise and a cute movie, and, and very well, I think, cast as Eagle Bauer and. And each character was very, very different and served a purpose and just was wonderful. And I think the writers, uh, Richard Whitley, and um, he was, I really enjoyed him. And Russ, I, I can't pronounce his last name, um, 
the but, guy, you mean uh, the guy they kept shoving in in the lockers and uh, yes, yes, freshman yes, helper. Yes, yes. <laughs> right, exactly. You do know this movie. I did do. You, did, did you just watch it again, or what did you do? Um, I was supposed to watch it recently, but I, I've been so busy. But uh, I'm going to sit down and watch it, uh, hopefully towards the end of the week. But I do know the movie incredibly well. Wow. How many times have you seen it? Oh, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, don't I... know. <laughs> I do know they stuck Russ in every little place they could stick him in that movie. Absolutely true. That is, you know, but that was the. I mean, Alan Arkish was just so wonderful as a director, and he, he was, he was, he's a real master when it comes to music and knowing music, and um, so it, it, they just had a great sense of humor, you know. And I, I, I don't think, um, well, I've actually seen and and spoken to. Um, uh, Roger Corman, and um, yeah, he just turned ninety. Yeah, and he, this is one of his favorite movies. He never thought it was going to do as well as it did. Well, it might have not have done well if they, they had it called it Disco High, which is what they originally were going to go with. Really, I didn't even know that. Yeah, unbelievable. But Alan Arkus, of course, uh, seems like a nice guy. He'll let mice into the concert. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I love the fact that he was he was so cute in that. Uh, <laughs> That's right. He played that um, the guy who who was the uh, ripping the tickets. tickets. Yeah, yeah, taking the tickets and the and he, yeah. Have you ever had him on one of your shows? Not yet. Not yet. You're the first person yeah. from Rock and Roll High School I've successfully made a contact with. Oh, great. Yeah, so great. I'm so happy to have you on, you know. Oh, well, thank you. You know, we all love it, so it's, it's um, hopefully, but I would think that you would have some luck through Facebook because, I, I you know, I've been able to stay in touch with a few of uh, the people through, through uh, Facebook. I know Alan Arkish is on it, and, and um, I think he's doing Heroes Reborn right now. Okay. Are you are, um, are you one of these um, people that uh, adds anybody? Who what adds just anybody? Like I like, like I've what? got I've got some of my I got uh, I must have a over a dozen or so of my people I've interviewed on my friends list. You 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 what, say that again? You I have, I say I must get about a good half a dozen or so of the people I've interviewed on here on my friends list. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I've kept in touch yeah, with them. No, I definitely add because I do it for, you know, it's a, uh, for me, I do it for, I do Facebook for career reasons. So if I send I you a friend. You know, I don't, I don't divulge my personal information and no. like, you know, it's just uh, usually what I'm doing and, and stuff in terms of different projects. So if I send you a friend's request, you'll accept it? Absolutely. I'll Go do that. I, I didn't okay. find I didn't find you on Facebook. I found you on your web page, but uh, really, yeah. on my on my um, web page for my artwork. Yeah, I didn't even know yeah. you were an artist. Yes, I am. I do quite well with my art. I um, I'm in a number of galleries across the country, so uh, I'm a sculptor. Plug your web page. You you what? You can plug your web page. Plug your web page. Oh, I can. Plug sure, right go now. ahead. Well, yeah. Okay. It's um, it's called um, my web page is dayyoungart.com and it um it has all my sculpture on it and uh, has my bio on it and and it's um mainly I, I it's my stone work and my bronze work and uh, yeah I've been doing I've been sculpting for a number of years and it's such a wonderful thing to do while you're also an actor because oftentimes you're not able to be acting at the same time that you are uh, you know as much as you want and so I'm able to stay creative and so I I um, 
Yeah, I do a lot. I'm in a gallery in, um, let's see, in Santa Fe and a gallery here in Beverly Hills and a gallery in um, Carmel, California and San Diego. And uh, where else? Let's see. I think that's about it for right now. But, um, yeah, I, I very much love it. So check out my webpage, definitely. Oh, I've checked it out. Like, a lot of the people I've interviewed are into doing art now, you know, like either painting. or like, I'm surprised how many uh, actors uh, do that uh, when they're not working on, on a film. And I'm not surprised at all because, um, you know, as an artist, a visual artist, you can at any point, you know, go and do your artwork. As an actor, it's a little harder. You usually need another person. You need, um, or you need to get a director to hire you or a producer or whatever. I, I'm fortunate that I'm a part of the actor studio where um, wonderful actors go to do scene work, and so I keep, I keep active with that. But um, I think that it, 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 there, you're allowed to be a lot more independent when you're a visual artist. Uh, so it's just you and your piece of stone for me or you and your canvas. And, um, you know, you're able to do that art form whenever you want to. So I think it's a wonderful compliment for an actor. Well, and I, I, think, creative. I think your work is pretty impressive. I did look at it. Oh, thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. I, I, I love it. It's a lot of, a um, lot of nude bodies. <laughs> I'm waiting but, for the uh, Riff Randall, Kate Rambo sculpture. That's right. Well, I, you know, I'm waiting for someone to commission me. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would be fun. Maybe, um, maybe uh, I can get Roger Corman, which I doubt he would not be able to to pay enough money. <laughs> I don't think. Um, but um, yeah, I, I I love it. I feel very fortunate that I have that I'm able to do both. Riff, actually, I had a big art show here in LA, and um, PJ come, came to that. That was about four years ago. It was great to have her there. Awesome. When you were at the concert scene, when you uh, met um, Alan Arcus, when she, he ripped your ticket, what was that little thing you had around your neck that uh, he goes, "That won't hurt nobody." I always wondered, what is that? Oh, I think it was on my belt. Yeah. It was a little thing that, um, like, it was like a little holster that, that would shoot like little darts. Oh. I have no idea why they, you know, it was part of my costume. They had me looking pretty stupid and, and you know, with a little polka dotted cape and everything. And, um, but, I, I, you know, the budget was so low. I think, you know, it was less than a hundred thousand. It was about maybe a hundred and eighteen thousand. I can't I don't really even remember, but it was so little the amount of money for this movie and and we did it in eighteen days and um it was uh so they asked us to use their ward own wardrobe and and everything and we worked long, long hours and and but it was my very first movie and it was such an amazing experience. So I feel very grateful that I was able to do that. It became so popular and 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 all of that. Yes, and uh, of course, uh, Vincent Van Patten, of course, play. Uh, I gotta say, with him, I like the fact that he remained a doofus even towards <laughs> the end of the film. You know, he'd walk up and he'd go, "Nice weather we've been having, though. A bit dry yeah. lately." And I like the second girl. The second girl goes, but it's raining cats and dogs in Idaho. He puts his finger and goes, yes. And she goes, see you later, Tom. <laughs> yes, right, 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 right. That, yes, you know all of the, the dialogue and all the characters. I know this yeah, film well. Um, I know. And I love Eagle Bauer's office. I thought that was totally hysterical. Oh, yeah, the, the smoke in the boys' room. <laughs> yes. And they, the soundtrack of that movie was really quite good. I've got it. Do you? I play yeah. the PJ Souls version of Rock and Roll High School a lot on my show. Oh, you do? Because 
uh, nothing against the Ramones, but I think PJ adds more spirit to the song than what the Ramones did. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like like the spirit of it, the way she sings it. Well, I didn't even know that there was a. Uh, a, a so you're saying there is. Um, There's a soundtrack. I've got her. There is a soundtrack that PJ Soul sings a witch song. Rock and Roll High School, it's track number seven. Oh, okay. So, right, 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 right. I mean, it's in the movie too, right? Yep. Right. Okay. When we're all dancing in the hall. Um, no, when you guys are in the gym. Oh, in the gym. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Gee, but I think I know the movie more than you do. <laughs> well, I haven't seen it in a while, but I well, I just don't I don't remember the PJ uh, that. But now that you mention it, yes, 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 yes. Um, but I didn't know that they that they released two different soundtracks: one that the Ramones did, and one that. Uh, the PJ. Oh, the remote. The, the song is recorded both ways on the soundtrack. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Both versions are on there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. It's yeah. A... I. Oh, you have to try to get PJ. She she will love that you love to. Uh, yeah. She, I mean, she she loves it. She loves music and 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 all of it. Well, I'm going to try to get her on here. I'm going to reach out to her again. I reached out to her last year. I didn't hear back. I thought I'd give it some time and, you know, try back again. And uh, I will do that. But, yeah, I love playing her version of that song. Oh, that's great. That is so great. And and do you find that there's a – that people up there um, really like the Ramones and, and are big fans of, of, of Rock and Roll High School? Or, or, or is it just you? Um, it's got a fan base. I um, we got a ten screens theater here that uh, you know mainly plays the big blockbusters, you know. But I tend to like the, the more of the cult and midnight films best, and uh, and uh, Rock and Roll High School was one that uh, I actually watched it down here at the station. There's a projector here, and and we watched it right on the wall. Made a nice big picture and <laughs> watched oh, it. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh yeah. All those great lines. Yeah, uh, what was it like working with uh, Vincent Van Patten? He was very sweet. He was, um, you know, I was the new kid on the block. This was my very first movie and all of them. And PJ, my gosh, PJ was, um, she just took me under her wing because she was very experienced and had been working a lot longer. Um, And... uh, it was amazing. She was a lot older. I mean, we both were, I, I was like 22 playing, uh, you know, 17 or whatever, 16 or 17 years old. And PJ was like 29. So they really, you know, we were playing way under our age. And I think everyone was, but what was, it worked great because we all looked so young and we had such great young energy but i was it was my first movie so they were just everyone was so generous including uh vince i don't see him very often at all um i I don't see him at any of these conventions but um uh he he was great to work with everyone was great to work with i I love that van he had he goes it'll take me 10 million lawns to mow but it was worth it or, or he right. says, uh, says to Eaglebauer, he goes, the only girl I ever dream about is Rip. But I keep waking up just before the good part. <laughs> I know, I know. And of course, Clint uh, Howard. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah, those dating yeah. tips. <laughs> yes. Oh, I loved it. You know, it was. It, it, I just, I, I just thought it was. Yes, that was so clever. And yes, when we go up on Mulholland and um, with the mannequin. <laughs> yeah, he has that dummy with him there, uh, that blow up doll. Yeah, that blow up doll mannequin. Yeah, blow up doll. It was pretty funny. And of course, was, when uh, Vincent has his arm around your neck, he's trying to unbutton your uh, outfit, but he's actually tearing that poor flower apart. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was just 
it just was so cleverly done. It just, um, I just have such great memories of it. And I have a daughter who just, um, when we went, when she went, she went to a college called Savannah College of Art and Design. And, you know, I became really cool when someone came up to me um, in the, uh, at this really hip coffee uh, store and the, and, and this young girl who was, very much of a punk mentality just was going nuts over the fact that I was in rock and roll high school. So my daughter just was all of a sudden became so proud of me. <laughs> so, but before that it was like, Oh yeah, mom. Okay. Yeah. I'll watch it. But then she became all of a sudden a huge fan of it. There you go. She I mean, saw- she loved it when I, she was really young, but then, you know, they go through a stage where they just don't want to know anything about their mom. And then at college, it when when she when so many people loved the movie, she just was so excited about that. Yeah, there's a couple other interesting people in that movie too. Um, one person that has small part, but she stood out to me was Lynn Farrell as Angel Dust. Oh right, loved her. What was she yeah. like? What was she like? Oh, you know, I um. PJ had a lot more um, to do with her than I did. I, I, I think I just met her once, you know, or twice, but she seemed very, very nice. I mean, um, I mean, yeah, she seemed very nice. I think she only worked that one day um, when, you know, no, she probably worked a couple of days actually uh, for the Roxy, and then we had to do the, the chase scene in the back up there it was all shot at the roxy which is a very famous place where where different bands go and and play another person that i loved in this movie too is uh don Steele. love don yes. Steele, and unfortunately no longer with us he just had a great voice and very funny what was he like he was he was great too very funny and um uh but he did, didn't he die, what, about five years ago or something? I think, I looked it up, it was, I think, 1995. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was a while ago. He seemed like he was young. Yeah, he had, he had a very youthful look to him, you know, like, um, and uh, he had some of the great lines in this movie, like, screaming. <laughs> yeah, screaming, exactly, yeah. 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 No, I. A... Yeah. Yeah, you hear his voice all through um, Gremlins as well. You never see him, but you can hear him on all the radio scenes. Right. So was he? He was mainly a, a radio broadcaster. Is that the deal with uh, with him? I think so. Yeah, but he did a lot of um, um, cameos in films uh, too, like uh, with uh, Alan Arkash and Roger Corman and. And, um, you know, he was in Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. But no, I love Rock and Roll High School. I know this film so well. And uh, it's such a... I know, you really do. You know it so much better than I do. It's like embarrassing for me. (laughs) It's a very colorful looking film, too. Like the colors are so bright and vibrant. when you, And then it looks so good on Blu-ray. Yeah. Yes, I have seen it on Blu-ray, and you're absolutely right. And it's, we were so lucky because we got great weather, um, and it was, a, you know, beautiful California days that we were shooting, and it was it was really great. It was really great. I just wish that it had done better when it when it had opened, you know, in the movie theaters. But it's you know it was I, I feel so blessed to be a part of it, and that you know. People like you, you know, so many years later, you know, are, 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 are still talking about this movie. Well, it gets mentioned whenever I play something from the soundtrack on here on my live shows. And like I said, I play the PJ Souls version of Rock and Roll High School a lot. That, that, should, that should be enough to convince her to come on here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Totally. <laughs> absolutely. She will love that, I think. Yeah. You did some other interesting movies, too. I didn't know about this film. Uh, after Rock and Roll High School, you did something called Strange Behavior. And I looked at right. the trailer for it. Kind of a, an Invasion of the Body Snatchers type movie. Um, 
was, is that strange invaders or strange behavior? Strange behavior. Right, strange behavior. Um, strange invaders was the one that was more of a body snatcher. Strange behaviors was originally the original title was called Dead Kids. Okay. And it was it was a movie that um, uh, the same writer um, did both of them, who has won an Academy Award before. He's just a fantastic guy. His name is Bill Condon, and I've worked with him a number of times. And he discovered me in rock and roll high school. And I, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of when I was right after I had finished rock and roll high school and come out, I was standing in the line of my bank, which was a Wells Fargo. And this guy kept peering over my shoulder from behind me. And I was trying to ignore the whole thing until it was just so obvious. And so I turned around and I said, hi, can I help you? And, and he said, oh my God, are you day young? And I said, yes. And he said, I loved you in, in, as Kate Rambeau. I just loved you, you know, and I've written a movie for you uh, with you in mind. And um, can, I, can, I, can I have my agent contact your agent? And, and would you meet with a director? And um, uh, it was just like, it, it just happened like that. And before I knew it, and two weeks later, I was on my way to New Zealand to shoot this movie called Strange Behaviors with uh, Louise Fletcher and Dan Shore and Michael Murphy, myself, um, and Bill Condon wrote it, and a kind of a cultish director by the name of Michael Laughlin directed it, and um, a wonderful actress by the name of Fiona Lewis was also in it, and uh, it just had a wonderful time and i was in new zealand for three months shooting it and of course and you... it is around it's 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 called uh, strange behaviors yeah and it's a very dark um kind of horror movie in its own way but it's got a a little bit of a cult following as well and of course strange invaders uh you, you started uh, with a, another person i've actually tried to get on here uh, for the 35th anniversary of Dressed to Kill, and I had a hard time. I haven't reached her yet. Is that's Nancy Allen? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I tried to reach out to her, and uh, I got a link to the Criterion edition to Dressed to Kill, and I'm like, yeah, come on the show. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know her because. Um, I was very much, it was a very small role, but they, um, where the, the lead guy in, uh, strange behaviors and myself came on and we did this, um, um, beginning sequence in the movie and we actually, I think we get like pop, become pods and, and disappear or something. Um, Another movie that I have to see again is in Strange Invaders. A very clever movie. Again, the same team of writer, director, and um, uh, but I don't know Nancy, but I know that PJ does. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, Carrie. Um, right, exactly. And you were in Spaceballs, Mel Brooks Spaceballs. I, I was in Spaceballs. I that was a lot of fun. That was one of those. Those kind of situations where, yeah, I played a space waitress and I had I had tremendous fun and and John Candy's tail gets caught up my skirt and <laughs> in the in the space um, in the space uh, station we have where the space uh, gosh what was it? it was snack bar of some sort and um, but. It just that was one of those experiences with Mel Brooks, where he was a couple stages over watching on a monitor, and you would hear this booming voice coming through where he would say, "Space waitress, move to the other side of the counter," you know, and it would be like uh, uh, hearing the Wizard of Oz coming out of the um, speaker system, you know, and and literally. He was a couple of um, stages over. You know, it was such a 
it was such a big, big movie, and uh, the sets were magnificent. It was a lot of fun to 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 work on that as well. Like working with John Candy. Yes, I did. He was very funny and clever, and so sorry, and 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 as such a wonderful comedian, and sorry he's not around. I remember when he passed away. Yeah. And you were also Way too bad. You were also in Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was. I was in. I certainly was. That was a great experience, and it was a little cameo role also. But it, you know, was fun and and um, yeah. So I, I, all these kind of cult classics in their own ways. I had heard that someone was remaking Running Man. I don't know if that's true or not. I wish they'd stop remaking movies. I mean, it worked with Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and it worked with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, but more often than not, it doesn't. Right, I agree. Yeah. It's really too bad when it, you know, that when that happens. Yeah. It, but, it, yeah. Yeah. And you were in Pretty Woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A bit of my claim to fame. Um, yes. I was. I played the bitchy saleswoman who kicks her out of the store, and then she comes back and she says, big mistake. Uh, and it's a very, very popular scene a couple years ago, I think at the 25th. Um, I think it was last year, actually, at the 25th anniversary of the movie. Um, my scene was voted the top scene in the movie, so it, it had a lot of yeah, it was a lot of fun to do that. Well, and I really, really enjoyed working with Julia. It was earlier in her career and really a nice woman. And I thought she did such a lovely job in the movie and loved Gary Marshall. He's a fantastic director. Fun, really fun to work with. It's interesting because if you've seen the movie Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion, they're watching that scene and commenting on it. I know, I know. It, it, it is. It's very funny. Yeah, though they had to get my approval and uh, to to use that. Oh, yeah, that was a great movie too, though. Too. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. In your in *Serpent in the Rainbow*, you get to work with Wes Craven, who unfortunately we lost recently. Yes. Yes, that was um, a very interesting movie, and um, that shot in in Haiti and in the Dominican Republic at a time that was very um, scary in, in their history, um, but a, a magnificent country, Haiti, and such talented um, artists, the people, and talk about a colorful environment. It's just so, so colorful, and, and the, the artwork and the painting of the woods and all of that is just, and their paper mache that they do also. It's just quite amazing, the country. Um, but yes, I have a, um, I'm attacked by, by voodoo and I have a uh, fit on the dining room table and a, a convulsion on the dining room table of that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, and I really enjoyed working with Wes. He was great. And Bill Pullman was fantastic in the movie as well. It was very interesting because it's based on a true story. And the man who wrote the book is a uh, famous ethnobiologist. Um, and so, but they chose, Universal chose to turn the movie into a horror movie to try to get a bigger audience. So I think it would have done quite well. Um, had they not done that, but uh, they 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 chose that that's the direction they chose to go. And of course, uh, Shake Rattle and Rock, which was kind of a, a follow up to uh, Rock and Roll High School. Now, what was that experience like? Well, I don't know. That was kind of you know, PJ and myself were just kind of, were kind of thrown in there. Alan Arcus just tried to, I think, you know pay a little homage to us and, and also Mary Warnoff Warnoff was in that too um, but it wasn't really that fulfilling of an no. experience I, 
you know, I, I, I think that um, we could have been used better was my felt my feeling. But it did introduce Renee Zellweger as um, I think that was one of her first movies. And I thought she was wonderful in it. How are we doing on time? Actually, I have to close up because I, I, I need to get on my Vespa and get over to um, a painting class I do. Okay, well, before you go, did you just want to talk about Unbridled a little bit? That's your new movie? I know it's Rachel, yes. Rachel Hendricks yes. is in that. Who's in it? Rachel Hendricks. Right, right. Do you know Rachel? Not personally, but I've reached out to her to try to get her on here. Okay. Um, yes, it's called Unbridled, and it's based on a true story um, or a... a an actual place that exists called the Corral, which is a um, a ranch where you find that uh, where they have abused horses and they bring in abused teenage girls who have either been trafficked or or beaten up or abused in some way, um, and they kind of and they mix them together. And you find that um, they are uh, they have a way of healing one another, and it's been quite quite uh, amazing and very successful in this kind of therapy. It's a kind of horse therapy, but it's usually the abused horses that the that seem to bond with the abused teenage girls. Wow! And I um, play a mother of a of the lead girl in it who is abused and trafficked by my boyfriend, who is Eric Roberts in it. Okay. And, um, and so, uh, she is taken away from us. And when it's kind of discovered by the police and then the police arrest him and, um, she goes into this system and she gets paired up with a, a beautiful horse. Um, and together they heal one another. So it's really a beautiful story. Okay. Well, a couple quick questions before I let you go. Number one, um, wh where can I get an autographed picture of you? Can I just email you? or? Yeah, go ahead and send me an email. It's so sweet. Send me an email, and I'll, I'll tell you about, you know, you know, yes. I mean, basically the way it works, if people want that, is that they send um, me a self um a, a self-stamped envelope, um, and um, then I'm able to send it back. Okay. And most people are charged, but I won't charge you. <laughs> oh. Because that's they, how the actors make their money. Well, they won't let me self-stamp it here for some weird reason. Um, I can definitely send an envelope, though. What, what do you mean they'll stamp it here? They, they won't let me... Um, send the postage or whatever here for some weird reason they won't let you do that now here like they won't let me put oh, so you mean if you put it inside you get american stamps and you put it inside a self stamp and you put it inside of the envelope that you send to me okay well i'll see what that, i can do with that yeah that's what they do that's what they do normally so i i mean i mean i i, I get them from all over the the world actually people uh, send me different things, but uh, yeah, just ask your local post office. Okay, well, I'll I'll, I'll message you, uh, send you an email to get your. Either that, or you've got to come to the next convention, and I'm sure there'll be one in New Jersey, Chiller, or something like that. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I'll add you on Facebook. I'll find you on there. And uh, one last thing, um, would you do a plug for my show? Absolutely. What do you want me to do? Just say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. Oh, my gosh. You're going to have to lead me through that. <laughs> well, just say you're listening to Greg Gilbert. That's my name, you know. Uh, Python's yes, Paradise is the name of my show. Actually, just say you're listening to Greg Gilbert in Fredericton. Okay, I will. <laughs> Hi. Uh, do you want me to do it now? Sure. Okay. Hi, my name is Day Young, and I'm listening to Greg Gilbert in Fred Fredericktown. Is that Fredrick, right? Fredericktown. 
Fredericton. Fredericton. Um, in Canada. Very exciting. There Happy to you, be on the show. There you go. And I'll uh, reach out about the, the autograph information. And uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and celebrating Rock and Roll High School. You're welcome, and thank you for having me, Greg. Yes, uh, God bless, and, and uh, good too. luck with everything you're doing. Oh, I appreciate. Gabba, I really, ga- really appreciate that. Gabba, gabba, hey. <laughs> gabba, gabba, hey, back to you. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye, thank bye, you. day. Okay, bye, Greg. Bye, bye. <laughs>